The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everyone. Tommy O'Brien is not here right now. I'm sitting in for Tommy, and this is Basil Chapman. I'm the host of the Tiger Technicians Hour. Usually comes up after Tommy's show, Morning Market Kickoff. Mine's the Tiger Technicians Hour, <clears throat> and my service is the opening call daily newsletter. Um, we're going to look at the Dow. The Dow closed at 37,305 on Friday. I, and, oh, I should do this because some of you don't know necessarily know my work. So let me just grab that quickly. Here we go. I was just about to show you uh, my the core of my basic technique, and that's this right. Try to identify the lowest low bar. Use technical indicators for that. And then count each successively higher peak, alphabetized, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, seven higher peaks. There's never an H. So you have to assess if something went wrong. If you suddenly go to a higher high than that peak G, but it's at that fourth highest peak, peak D, that other things can happen. So here we go. The Dow, I'm doing this. I, I'll show you the futures right now. Look, here the futures. Where did I put that? Type wrong chart. Let me just go right there. Look, here the futures. YM trading up uh, 52 at 37 after such a spectacular move. Look, day in, day out. Uh, green candles, green candles all the way through Friday. <clears throat> And then overnight, we haven't yet made a new recovery high. But this is so fascinating. Why? Because, look, I use a nine-period moving average and the 14-period moving average. Look how high the nine is. Look at the price way over the green nine-period moving average. Look at the 14-period moving average at 36,899, way below. Look at the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, so strong. The stochastic flat at 96 is great. This blue line, the unbalanced volume, says, ooh, be a little careful here because we kind of overbought on that metric. And this little gray line, right, there's these old daily charts on the left here. This, this gray um, moving, moving average right now is the RSI, the relative strength index. And that, in a sense, is confirming the up move. There's no real divergence, but I can, mm, can I do it? Yeah, I can show you. Look, you see the little red? When it goes to red and it's over 80%, that's a level that says it's getting into um, an overbought range, but the overbought range doesn't mean to say, oh, because it's overbought and now it's to go over. So it just means it's in that range that's just very high. And that's just a kind of a cautionary measure, and that's all it is. You have to use other indicators to confirm. Look at the weekly chart. Look at the skyrocketing single leg A from that October 27th low, whoosh, to the upside. And look at the monthly chart. The monthly chart, now, because this gets smoothed out, it's a move, it's a, there we go. I have to raise these letters. They're not automated. I do every single, ever, whatever chart you ever see of mine is notated by hand. doesn't take very long, but it's notated by, I found that doing it automatically means that there are occasionally instances where there's, there's an alternate count which has not been taken in, and that can lead to a miscount, and I prefer to do it my way. <clears throat> My way. All right. So this is a leg A, B. Oh, isn't that interesting? So this is the starting point of the new buy signal to buy mode. At this, this point, I'm still just calling it a buy signal. But if that's the case, then, then you have to count from this low, every single peak gets counted. So that's an A. But then this little modest peak right here below it is an A. And then that becomes the B. And this is already now in a leg C. So the E mini is just fractions away. Let's just go to the S and P again. Look, here's the S and P. S P X dot X. Make sure I've got it in the right place. Yep. So the all time I was forty eight eighteen. It achieved a forty mm -mm, right there. That Doji candle on uh, that was on Thursday. There's a closing price. So it's the S and P uh, with a high of forty uh, seven one uh, forty seven three eight some 70 points below, uh, 80 points actually below the all-time high, is followed through 
on Friday with a very narrow range when you consider is that yeah that is correct that's the 15th <laughs> didn't realize that it was a very narrow range with all that volume that came in still a narrow range and it made a peak G slash B and that usually goes to a higher peak so now what we're looking at is in a very short term the Dow is getting a little bit toppy based on my unbalanced volume the S&P is getting a little toppy based on the unbalanced volume. All the other technicals are really very strong. The QQQ, it's the NDX 100, down 48 cents right now at 404.81, um, made a new recovery high on Friday. And um, here the technicals are very good. And the unbalanced volumes already had one little pullback, so it might have another one. But it's saying that at 404.81, uh, down 53 cents right now, the 403 to 402 level for the first part of this week is going to be really important. Support IWM, the Russell 2000. I'm going to the actual contract here, but it's pre-marketed. It is up at 92 cents at 197.96. The high that was made on Thursday was 200.04. Friday had a lower high, so that becomes a peak F. Now, these might turn into alternative counts, but right now I'm calling it an F. On balance volume, same thing. Stochastic, fabulous at 94%. So it's going to be some kind of bad news, something maybe. Uh, I, I'm not sure what it could be, but this is what I really wanted to show you. Well, look at the um, SMHs, the semiconductors, screaming to all-time highs. On Friday, goes to a high of 170, right there it is, 175.86. And with a little, this candle, this little uh, candle uh, has the character of an evening star, even a dragonfly, but I like to look at it as just purely a doji candle, opens and closes at about the level that it started at, and you assess it from there. And that just essentially says, on the pullback side, it's at 174. Any close under 168 in the next two, three days says, all right, we've started a little bit of a consolidation, and let's follow it that way. That doesn't mean to say it couldn't break out today. Now, I did have a Chapman Wave high uh, trend gauge reading. This is Richard Arms' trend gauge. I only use it for, for two numbers, on the upside and the downside. If it's on the upside and it's high, then I say within two sessions, the S&P future should have a strong rally, even if you think that it's going to be from weakness, and we've already seen, what did we say? It's already up 12 points in the E-mini. Now, this is going to be quite important because uh, it's all those weekly charts. I would prefer to see the actual, the close on a Monday after a really strong week. Why? Because if on the Friday there's a turn down at about like an hour and a half before the close and then a very sharp pullback, very often that could set the stage for a Monday uh, lower high and they could make a peak for the entire week where it doesn't take out their previous uh, Friday's high. That wasn't the case uh, most of the time. If the Dow um, closed higher, the S&P did pull back. Let me show you. It did uh, make a little bit of a peak that, in a way that maybe did. It did kind of what uh, you'd expect from a doji candle. And then another tiny little doji candle if there was to be a pullback. So I make it real clear a pullback under 46.94, that was the low of Thursday. Amazing how these numbers fly by. 46.94 in the next two days says, okay, you've started some kind of a consolidation. I'll be back. Basil Chapman sitting in for Tommy O'Brien. Tough shoes to fill, but I'll do my best. I'll be back in a moment. Tigers, up. tis the season for leveling up your trading skills. Basil Chapman is happy to offer all opening call subscribers a free subscriber webinar Wednesday, December 20th, 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Basil Chapman will be discussing major sectors and stocks that are coming off their lows in order to prepare your portfolio for 2024. This is a free webinar for all opening call subscribers. If you are not yet a subscriber, visit the front page of TFNN.com today to secure your spot for Wednesday, December 20th. TFNN, educating investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Yeah, it's market kickoff, and uh, I'm I'm doing these charts as you see. I wanted to show you the um, uh, one minute chart of the E mini. It did make a little peak D. You remember the fourth highest peak D? That's where other things can happen. It did pull back, and it keeps hitting this 200 period moving every support. I mean, you can see this live. This is amazing. Look how many times. One, two, three, four, five, six times in the last since 7.50 this morning um, a.m. And uh, I'm starting to see that this is going to be a real test because after spectacular sessions on all the way through last week <clears throat> and a peak D in the five-minute chart, only a peak C in the, in the 10 minute, but in the morning, that, that might fail. So what we're looking at here is <clears throat> within the context of uh, patterns, the S&P did make a lower high. So we're going to go from that in a, in a moment. But I, I would like right now, since a number of people in the den have asked me to look at uh, certain stocks, let me go right to that. So the first one is fuel cell. So fuel cell, F-C-E-L, <clears throat> there's a kind of an alternate energy. I, I think it's hydrogen, right? Oh, I have an update. I, I've done it so many times and I always lose the notations here. I had even this morning, I woke up to find a little note saying you've got to shut down. <clears throat> so I was happy that all the work I did yesterday and uh, last night was saved as I'm preparing for my webinar coming up on uh, Wednesday. So yes, so this is fuel cell, uh, this is fuel cell energy. In legs C, mate, that's yep, legs E in the daily chart. MACD, stochastic, everything's good. On balance volume did pull back, so it's pulled back a little bit. Now, this is going to be quite interesting because the weekly chart, it's the first time since April that it's actually gotten to a leg C, a leg B in the weekly chart from the lower bar. <clears throat> and we'll watch it closely. And that monthly chart, I remember I did this A, B, C. I believe it made a peak D. Yes, it did. It made a peak D back in early 2021, uh, almost at 30, like 29. And then it came tumbling down. And the most, it actually went under a dollar. This thing really has quite a ride up and down. So I like what I'm seeing here. I, I would only say this. It's a little bit extended in the daily chart, the weekly chart's really improving. There's a difference between extended and improving, but that nine period moving average hasn't crossed positive. It's still pink, it needs to change to green. 
So when I would do this, I believe that you're in it. Um, I, usually you ask something about something you're in. If you're not in it, um, it's real tough right now because it's a little extended. I would prefer it's at 154. Pre-market, it's already up 19 cents at 173. What if pre-market, you don't see 173 all day and it actually closes at 142? What do you do then? That's a big percentage move in a very low price stock. If you're looking out as building a position, that's something completely different. Then I would say you've got to enter right even at 174. It's not too high because you're going to average down. That's your function because that's what you want to do longer term. That's different to buying and saying, oh, my God, it's going down. I better cost dollar cost average and you keep buying lower. No, this is the plan. And the plan is there's this whole congestion area in the 1.30s. And that just says that should be between 138 and 134 should be really good support. So if you're not in it, I think if you had patience and you just put that in, you'd get it. But if this suddenly starts to trade at 178, 182, you might have to wait quite a while to get that. So as it stands right now, I know that you're looking at things both position-wise, uh, more intermediate term, but you're prepared to look at them short term, A2. So I'm going to suggest that you actually, 174, I don't want to buy a gap up, but it closed at 154. If you can get it initial in the 150s sometime between today and tomorrow, that's just a starter position. The real position as I see it is I'd like because it does this so often, I've followed it for years. Um, it tends to fill gaps, not the very big ones from the bottom. I mean, from big ones, meaning lower down and moving higher, but the ones that are closest. So I think that 140 area is going to be filled. So I'd have a little patience, um, and that's the best thing I can do. That weekly chart, if it turns green by Friday of this week, uh, then I would say the $2 area is going to be the next uh, level of um, consistency where it keeps trying to break into the twos and then it'll hold the twos. So it's the start of a position. Next question is, uh, right, oh, I didn't, yeah, I'll do, I'll do the other one if I get a chance. But in the meantime, Microsoft, who asked me Microsoft? Um, Piper Paul. Piper Paul, I should have a little flute here. Actually, I Piper Paul, I've got my drawing over there that I did years ago when I used to do notepad, musical notepads and and uh, all sorts of things like the cards. That's uh, playing the treble clef, like a, like a trumpet. Um, all right, so Piper Paul, let's see what Microsoft's doing. I should uh, mention that for subscribers, we are all along um, from the 338 level. It has spectacular move up to 384.30 at a peak F, and now it's come down. So we had a, a new position on Friday because we've taken little bits off. So we put some back on, um, where was it? On Wednesday. And it held very nicely on Thursday. I said to buy it under 366. It went under it and then closed very nicely above it. Pre-market is at 369. So this is what I wanted to show you. In this particular pattern, you see, if I put an arch in over here, especially it's already gone to a peak B, so that's a good thing. If it failed at a peak A or a peak B minus, in other words, it took out this left side, like that's the dreaded edge, it can go down quite sharply. But the fact that it's holding quite well and the fact that it had a good candle says that this might make a lowercase h to a lowercase m. And then, believe me, I would not be surprised if at some point it takes out the 360 before it goes to new all-time high, 384.31. But as I see it right now, so we've taken from that little bit we, we added back, we've taken something off. If it pops a little bit more, we'll take a little bit more, and I've raised the stop so it's, it's a, a no-lose position. So I like it very much because I think in Microsoft – MSFT trading at down 73 cents at 370.07. It's in the cloud, it's operational systems, it's subscription. I mean, it's just everywhere that you want to be. But I think it's been really well hyped for the last, uh, the whole of the whole of November. AI, 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 AI. I think it's due for a little bit of a rest uh, based just on the technicals. So what we, I, you didn't tell me, you just said Microsoft, please. And I'm going to tell you what, if I had no position right now, I'd say I would like very much to buy it at about 355 in the 350s if it gets there. 
how it gets is going to be important, but that's kind of the level that would, that would mean that it takes out the low that was made on the 4th of December of 362.90. And uh, it'll go low if it does rally from here. I'm anticipating that there's a lot of resistance. The high that was made on the 13th a few days ago was 377.64. If it can close above that level, that's really important because then I say, okay, now I can retest the 384.30 level. However, at the same time, what I am looking at here is, let me just get rid of that. What I am looking at, the, a lower case, oh, I didn't even show you the chart. Let me show you the chart. As we go into the break, I'll show you this chart right there. This lowercase h pattern right there can become a lowercase m as it goes sideways and uses up time more than, more than price in a trading band. That's the possibility yeah, if it rallies above Friday's high. I'll be TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this education educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back. So just uh, the market's open, the Dow's up 22, SP's up 9. So this is what I wanted to tell you. If you are looking at Microsoft, if you don't own Microsoft and you would like to own it for a while, then getting started here, just a starter position, I think is really important. One of the reasons is um, it's it, it meets all the criteria. Look, it's in the Dow, it's in the uh, S&P, it's in the uh, QQQs, it's in the, the um, XLK. So that's going to be really important. 
And whoops, what happened there? Um, hmm, my. All right, so let me just do something if you don't mind. I need to, I just hit a little ping, so I, I need to follow through here. Yeah. Okay, so within that context, start a little bit here at 369, realizing that this is really not the, the ideal position at this particular point. What you really want to be looking for is some kind of um, uh, catalyst that says it's going to take out the 390s and really start to go to the 400s. It might take a little while to do that. And I'm just going to do this right now because I've got a gift that I wasn't expecting. There we are. Good. Okay. So uh, here we are. Um, the weekly chart says everything's still very strong, could be digesting gains. Uh, the monthly chart says broke out to all-time highs. Stocks that go to all-time highs tend to continue going to all-time highs until there's a big change in market trend. And this particular point, uh, we're looking at uh, Microsoft still having strength, even though it, it was down earlier and now it's fractionally higher. But I suspect that this is a little choppy sideways phase. So, yes, I like Microsoft a lot. I think a big chunk of its gain has been made just for the moment. It needs to digest these gains, and then it can come back strong. But in that particular uh, aspect, I would say a, a nibble here at the 370, but you're really the first position, I would say, would be in the 360s, all right? Uh, and we can, we can come back to that tomorrow, if that's the question. Our next question was, let me just write, I wrote them down, USB. USB is not what you use for your computer. This is, in fact, USB's US Bank Core uh, stock that I used to. Oh, there is a delay in market data. All right, well, that's fine. Okay, so this is like so many stocks. It looks extremely overbought just on a visual level. On a technical level, it's got veracity because all the technicals are actually confirming the rally. But I suspect that at 44.70, this gap, some part of the gap will be filled, and that'll be under 4380. Let me just check if I'm right. 4380. 4380. Yeah. So 4363. If it goes below 4363, then this there's a good chance that a chunk of the gap will be filled. So if you're holding it long, this is in that category that says, hey, uh, just with a spectacular move that it's had. If you are long, my, my recommendation when it does something like this is just take a little bit off to reward yourself, number one. Number two, just money management says, right here at the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart at 44.71 where it is right now, there should be some resistance. You could always put that back. So if let's just say you are in, and I'm recommending at 44.71, take a little bit off, where would I put it back? Uh, maybe two and a half points down. You've made 5% for nothing. There you, you, that's the way I would look at it. So, yeah, but I do like it. But I think under every every visual that I can do right now, um, it should be digesting gains. And even if it goes higher, I suspect the whole 42 area, uh, maybe even to 40, is going to be tested over the next two, three weeks. So it looks very good. Monthly chart has just begun on leg B. Well, I can't say it just began. It's a huge move. But in the month of uh, December, it was not looking that great. Now it's looking much, much better. Hope that helps you. Oh, and where would I expect the next big resistance level is at right here, this cluster formation with highs in January and February of 2023 in the 49 area. Let's say between 49 and 50. That would be a target that I would have. Okay, next question came in as... I think I'm going in sequence. I hope I am. Uh, let's see. Oh, there it is. Uh, yeah, fuel cells, hydrogen, correct. Oh, extended, expanded carbon capture deal with Exxon. Oh, very nice. Yeah, these alternate, at least in the moment, the alternate uh, fuels are, are definitely going to see a, a bump up. I, th I don't see why not until it gets sorted out. And then you might just get your one or two that are really the big focus. Zim. Uh, Zim is Zim integrated uh, shares. I'm looking at this A, B, very strong leg C at $10.66. So um, not a trader. Okay, so if you're not a trader and you've got into this, I, I, I don't know if you're in or, okay, let's just do it three ways. One is you're in. Number two is you're going in. And number three is um, it's a long-term trade. So you don't really worry about the vicissitudes of the shorter term because you're looking at the longer term. Okay, with that said, 
Uh, this is from the lowest low bar, especially when you go to Doji Candle. Beautiful takeoff. It goes peak A, next one penny above, a pullback. It pulls back, and then one penny above that high starts leg B. It's a floating net. B stays all the way until it makes a peak. It did. And now it's got a huge leg C. Oh, I like this very much. So let me just see. Zim integrated. Oh, shipping. Oh, I, that's why I remember the name. Let's just see what Nat's doing. Whoops, Nat. That's a, that, uh, they're all different sectors, but Nat right here. Oh, a nice big spike, giving back a little bit after the big spike earlier today. Nice uh, DSX, Diana shipping. That's lagging a lot, but it also had, oh, okay. So if that's the case, that's the shipping. Then Frank's, Frank trades in the den. Says, Folks, try the den. It's just really so much information. It's fabulous. Oil giant, BP pauses, oil, all tanker transits through the Red Sea. Ooh, ooh, ooh. A little nervous there, huh? All right. So, okay, if that's let's go back to Zim. <clears throat> I like it. And it's in a category that <sighs> has seen its day once it makes a top and goes down because then it's just, it's done. It goes from 24 all the way down to the sixes. And then when it comes back, it has a good, it's had a good couple of weeks. Back in May, June-ish, it goes from below 12 to the 14. So that's a 20% gain or more. So this is the same category, but it's gapped up today. Now, the gap up on a Monday, I don't ever think that that's important. It's just a coincidence of the days. This could have been Friday. The gap up in the daily means it's consistency every day. You can see that's a little different. This is by chance. There's a gap. So I just treat this as a leg A. So Zim is trading strong leg C in the uh, daily, but it's about to give back a chunk of the gains, early gains. A strong leg A in the weekly, off, uh, 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 wow, an all-time low, it looks like, yeah. So, mm, now, if, if it wasn't your name, not a trader, I'd have an easy time with this. I'd say, hey, um, this is acting well, take a little bit off right now. I would put that back under 1032, I'd put it back under 980, keep your core position if you're long. Would I buy it right now? I like the action. And I got a feeling from the just the pressure that I'm looking at in some of the uh, in the in the shipping area, some of the ships. And I believe this maybe this is the uh, a crude oil one. I should have a look. Um, let me do this. We've got a break coming up. I'm just going to type in here, Zim, Zim does what? What did I type? Oh, right there. I'll be back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, so I'm just looking at the Dow 53, the S&P is up 13. I'm looking at the E-mini futures. That did go to a leg E in the five minute chart, but finally we've got that leg D in the uh, 10 minute chart. Yeah, I wonder if we are seeing some kind of little topping action here and that by after three o'clock this afternoon, we start to see a week uh, close, going to a week close and then a week Tuesday. I wonder if that's going to be, I, I don't know. We'll see, but uh, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm monitoring right now. But in the meantime, so yes, <laughs> so Zoom is inter integrated, not infiltrated, it's integrated, integrated shipping service. I, you know, I, I like this chart on the very short term. I would just say that it's two gaps like this in a shipping, uh, integrated shipping, and we really don't know all that much about what's going on in shipping at this particular point. There could be a problem uh, through the uh, Suez Canal or whatever it is. So I, I oh, this, is a, this is a tough one. All right, so what I'm looking at here is within the context of what do I do? If you're along, I would hold it. It's in leg C. It should go to a D, but these screamers to the upside are screaming, and not a streamer, but a screamer with a C. Um, as they get this momentum, that momentum just stays until it doesn't. And then when it, it, it fades, it can fade really quickly. So it's tough to give you parameters without seeing the close today, because this is obviously news related. So here we go. At $10.40, what would I do if you aren't in it? And you're looking out longer term. I don't see any reason. I, I believe it sh it should get to 1040 if you're longer term in the next. Uh, if you bought it here and it dropped down to the 980 or 950 area, I still think you'll have a chance to get out at 1040, uh, 1045 at some point if you don't like what's going on. So I would just nibble. I get my foot in the door right now, and if it's a long term position, I wouldn't rush. Just take your time, build your position. Build your position, let it give you the conviction. I don't have conviction yet in the monthly chart, although it is turning up. It hasn't, that nine is still way under the 14. You probably have to go to the 1280, 1335 area before I am uh, I see that much strong, or maybe 1180 to 1250, let's put it that way. So it's a work in progress. So nibble here, um, if, if I was long, uh, and usually I'd say on a big move like this that you didn't expect, take a little bit off as part of money management and then put it back just a little bit lower down so that you get a, a couple of points gain and you're getting a new entry to lower your average cost. That's kind of the way I'd look at it. But yes, this is a start of something. With a start of something that over a period into February, let's say, you're looking at this now at 14. That's really tough to say because I need a full week of the weekly chart to confirm for me that it's two times it's able to close above the 14 period, the black 14 period moving average. It hasn't done that uh, since way back here, yeah, way back in March. 
So um, that's what I'm looking at. So yeah, tiptoe in if you aren't in. And if you are in, as I say, this is not a bad idea. Maybe take a little bit off and you can always put it back. But if you don't want to be fussy because you're looking at longer term, stay in the position. That's really what I'm saying. Okay. And uh, I personally still would have a stop in the 840 area. That's a big move down. I don't know where you got in, but that's a big move down. But I... I I wouldn't just hold it because this this thing has a habit of just going down. Once it hits the uh, the pink line, the nine period moving average on the way down, it just stays there. All right. Hope that helps you. Next question came in as a toll. <laughs> now, um, I looked at a lot of these over the weekend. Everything that I'm looking at here, just on a visual basis, not this fundamental or anything like that, just is on the shorter term. Yes, I could give this an alternative count in the weekly chart. I'll call it C for now because the technicals are really strong. Even on the daily, look, the 9 pre moving average, uh, it's way above the 9. nine's way above the 14. And the uh, MACD is good. Stochastic said 92%. On balance volume is turned down a little bit. I like, I, I like the pattern as I'm seeing it. I'm a little bit nervous if I go to, and I'm going to spend time on this in my, my um, webinar on Wednesday. To discuss this in terms of overview, what we're looking at, what would happen if the Philadelphia housing sector took a, took a took a dive? What would actually do that? It, it can only be interest rates, or it'll be something to do with banking. I'm not sure. I don't see that yet. I just see a really good move to the upside, and I'd, I I'd only fade it on a very short term basis. Why? Because money seems to have come back in every time it's pulled back, but it's trading down. Five at 6.47. So let's go back to toll because it matches this. Look, look at the daily chart on the left, weekly chart on the middle, um, monthly chart on the right. Very similar charts, right? Toll Brothers, very fine home builder. A leg D in the monthly, a leg C, I'm calling it for now, still a leg C in the weekly, and a leg F, maybe a peak F today in the uh, daily chart. So all I can say is <clears throat> now I'm going to do the same thing. What would I do if I'm in it? I just rattle off the same thing. It's had a spectacular move. Did you expect on Thursday that it's trading in 94s? It would spider into the hundreds. I don't think so, but it did that. So I'm just saying, give yourself a little gift. Take a little bit off, just part of money management, and then monitor it. How it fills the gap, and it will fill this gap, the very short-term gap right now. That's the low on toll of uh, 99 round number low. Huh, didn't see that and a high the day before of 96.69. So it'll get into the 97s at some point, maybe sooner, maybe later, but I, I believe it will. How if it makes that Eiffel Tower straight up and then straight down and suddenly you're looking at it at 88 by the second or third week of January, that's a big problem. So this is what I'm looking at. It is overbought. I would not be buying toll right now. I'd have to just money management says you don't have enough evidence right now even though I always say stocks that make all-time highs in, the, in, a, in a bull move tend to do that even on pullbacks, and this is a major turndown, I would rather wait. So if you're looking to get in my, between 96 and 92, that's kind of the area that I'd be looking at it. But if it actually pulls back, they'll say, ooh, maybe it's going to be a deeper slide. So you've got to be very disciplined and say, nine is over the 14, very much so. To get negative, it would have to trade in the 87s or 80, uh, 86, 87 area, maybe even 85. So that means any pullback should be a shorter term pullback, at least the way you need, initially think of it. And therefore, um, I'd wait. So, and probably what I would do is I'd wait until it can get to the 94s and then I'd buy a call option, a 95 call option, maybe go out to February. That's the kind of the way I would do it because. Um, it really is in many ways overextended until you look at the technicals and you say, wait a minute, these technicals are, are confirming the rally. It's not unconfirming it. So that's why I'm saying I'd wait for a pullback. And if you haven't got any and you just want to go long, you don't want to use options, this is the area right here. In the, in the I'd start off saying the mid to low 90s, right? Am, I might change that. Depends on what happens in the next two days. Uh, next question. I hope that helped you, Frank. But the other thing I would say is if you've been long, congratulations. That's fantastic. Um, okay. I haven't looked at crude oil. I'll get to crude oil. But wait a minute. There was another question I had. Uh, yeah. Could I look at 
Oops, there we go. Um, LNC, LNC, LNC. LNC is Lincoln National Corporation. Ooh, big move up. About to hit resistance in the 29th. So it's 27 same. I'll do the analysis during the break. I'll be right back. Tigers, tis the season for leveling up your trading skills. Basil Chapman is happy to offer all opening call subscribers a free subscriber webinar, Wednesday, December 20th, 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Basil Chapman will be discussing major sectors and stocks that are coming off their lows in order to prepare your portfolio for 2024. This is a free webinar for all opening call subscribers. If you are not yet a subscriber, visit the front page of TFNN.com today to secure your spot for Wednesday, December 20th. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So let me just go back to um, LNC. LNC is um, Basil Chapman sitting in for Tommy O'Brien. Uh, this is trading at 2764, down 18. This is Lincoln National Corps, uh, annuities, life insurance, and other services. You know, with the, with the boomers, uh, just uh, what, uh, 10,000 a day or something retiring. I think that this is an area that is going to be rife with, with benefits that, uh, that double entendre there, uh, that are going to accrue. And I, I like it. I think on a very short term basis, that 200 period moving average of 2653 is going to be hit. So that's just about a point lower. Um, yeah, just give it a little time. If you're in it, congratulations. Just hold it. 
But if you're looking for a brand new entry, just on the way it's acting, I probably want to wait a little bit. Even and what you say, what's the a point going to do after the big ugly candle that we're looking at from right here, um, the week of the 10th of March or the high of 31.17 and low of 25.51? That's we're already into that bar, so that would be the upside target. Um, I want to do a little bit of work in my show coming up, the Target Technicians Hour. That's my usual hour. I'll follow that up a lot more. But in the meantime, I'm anticipating that somehow we're running out of energy to the upside in the general market. I like the action of crude. I said to subscribers, we might switch one of our, our um, entries that we've had forever uh, that's in the um, DB Agricultural Fund and maybe go to another fund that has the oil. I didn't do it today, although I was tempted to do it. Um, I'm liking the way it pulled the crude oil pulled off the 200 period moving average. Look at that. We discussed this uh, on uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I said, look, it's holding that, it's holding that. What happens next week is going to be important. So this is crude oil could, in fact, start a, a pretty nice move here. So I think I covered most of it. Um, we'll come back in my show to the LNC. And let me just run through some of these questions. Yeah, okay. So I'm wrapping up now. I'm coming back from the news, and I'm going to do the um, usual show, my 